Okay, this is a summary of how the USA is starting a new Cold War with Russia. I made uh, over 27 lectures on this. Uh, it's hard to encapsulate, boil it all down. You're, you're definitely going to lose a lot of the detailed facts and analysis. Uh, but that's the nature of summaries. Okay, so the USA is starting a new Cold War in Russia by manufacturing the false perception that Russia is a serious, serious military threat in terms of, one, military capability, two, aggressive expansionist intentions. All right, this false perception is being used to create an arms race, which will be a massive moneymaker for the military-industrial complex and the U.S. power elite. This false perception will get gullible congressmen to sign big military appropriation bills. It will. So, the opposite is true. Russia has very limited military capability, as summarized in a diagram below. All right. All right, so the focus of this diagram, the centerpiece is Russia's incapacity for offensive military adventurism. And each of the surrounding elements are proof and evidence to support this. So the first is Russia's perfect record of military failure since the Crimean War, except one time, the latter part of World War II when they faced Nazi genocide. Like all their other military uh, ventures, they failed at the beginning of the war, miserably. Only when they realized the scope of uh, the Nazi threat did they finally get the rat together. One time. All right. So uh, the next is Russia's most recent wars. Three most recent wars. Uh, you can include their fourth with Afghanistan, too. It's a big failure. But the three most recent wars are all failures. Two wars against Chechnya, one war against Georgia. Now, Chechnya is a tiny province inside Russia. It's one one thousand the size of Russia, and Russia lost the first Chechen war to Chechnya. All right? I mean, I don't know what's comparable in the United States as far as geography, but let's say uh, a small state like Rhode Island, let's say, uh, USA loses a war to Rhode Island militiamen. All right, that's how pathetic it is. All right, and it took 10 years to get the second war under control against Chechnya. Uh, and then Russia's war against Georgia was a military debacle against tiny Georgia with a weak military. And it wasn't even all of Georgia. It was only two provinces within Georgia, Abkhazia and South Ossetia. Small. Russia had problems there. Russia's poor military capability right, and readiness. Now, the first thing you got to look at it is Russia's GDP. Russia's economy is small, one thirteenth the size of USA's. Plus, it is highly vulnerable, being overly dependent upon hydrocarbons. It's also vulnerable to sanctions. All right, and the economy is the basis of your military power. That's a pool of resources you draw from to build your military power. On top of that, Russia is militarily, technologically backward, especially compared to the United States, high tech. Russia has an incapacity to build their most modern weapons in significant numbers, all right? They only have prototypes of their T-14 tank, about 20 of them. They only have about 11... Uh, I guess it's around 10 prototypes of their SU-57 and one actual uh, finished model. One. That's it. All right. And their readiness is horrible. Their maintenance is horrible. 
Russia has so many diverse uh, models of uh, weapons and equipment that it's hard to logistically support their maintenance. All right. And that has been proven out in failures of logistics. Their trucks break down. In South Ossetia, a 40 by 40 mile territory, they had logistical problems because trucks were breaking down. That's pathetic. <coughs> Russia has rampant military corruption. That is historic. It's a pattern. That hurts your material readiness. It also hurts your personnel problems. Eroding morale. Russia has manifold military personnel problems. In recruiting, training, uh, retention, 42% of their enlisted force is one-year conscripts who don't get trained. Now, there's historic high rates of desertion in the Russian military. I mean, every damn war. Um, except Afghanistan. Even though there were desertions there, there were defections to the enemy, but there wasn't that much. Why? Where are they going to go in Afghanistan? All right? But every other damn war, there's high desertions, including World War II, massive desertions. High rates of conscription evasion, which is draft dodging. So another key problem is Russia's problem with internal stability and their long history of failed wars triggering revolutions. Russo-Japanese War. You get the 1905 revolution. World War I. Big military failure. You get two revolutions. The February Revolution and their October Revolution. You get the failure in Afghanistan. That was a key factor for the breakup of the Soviet Union. Now, the 2019 Rand Corporation report on military, uh, Russia's military power states that Russia's primary military threat is internal stability. That's what they fear the most. This is a long-term problem. They fight a bad war, there's going to be revolution. There's going to be, uh, you know, internal, you know, instability, riots, discontent. Certainly Putin's election is going to be put at risk. All right. Another thing that's a uh, thorn in Russia's side and is an inherent vulnerability are the Caucasus Emirates. All right. Way down south, that area... Uh, just north of the Caucasus Mountains, which span between the Black Sea. I'll show you a map real quick. Here's the Black Sea. Here's the Caspian Sea. Those are the Caucasus Mountains. This is the border of Russia, southern uh, Russia's southern border. Right above there are these uh, uh, Muslim provinces, all right, except North Ossetia is Christian, but they're all Muslim otherwise. And the all friend breakaway, especially Chechnya, which 15 times throughout Russia's history has tried to break away. 15 times. Right? They're a constant breakaway threat. And they've made multiple breakaway attempts when Russia has gone to war. Why? Because when Russia goes to war somewhere, they got to dedicate all their military assets there. And when the cat's away, the mice will play. All right, they're going to try to break away again. They're going to use that opportunity to break away again. Now, can Russia afford it? No. The Caucasus are important because it's the pathway for oil and gas pipelines for Russia. Coming out of Baku. Plus, it has 30 to 40%, maybe more, 45%, depending upon oil or gas, of the hydrocarbon resources in the Caspian. You know, the Caspian Sea is rich in, in hydrocarbons, gas and oil. The whole region, in the Caspian, around it, Turkmenistan. But 30 to 35 
to 45% are located in this area here. Right? It's vital to Russia. That's Russian territory. They don't want to give that up. That's a vulnerable underbelly. They go do something stupid. These guys are going to break away. And finally, there's nothing nearby that Russia can take. And anything they can't take is not worth taking. I showed you that. Russia cannot possibly take Japan, South Korea, China. I don't want to try to explain all that. You know, people don't understand military capacity, warfare. They don't know the history of warfare, especially at biggest invasions. Well, they're not going to understand. And they'll just believe whatever everyone's saying based on nothing. If everyone's saying that's true, though, in their minds. All right. Everything else is not worth taking in terms of resources and GDP. Why would Russia bother? They're just going to lose far, far, far more in UN sanctions, U.S. European sanctions, in lost trade, in, in uh, lost sales of oil and uh, gas. All right, they're just going to get whacked, and also they're going to have, end up fighting NATO countries. They're going to get whacked, uh, and even in non-NATO nations, they're going to end up fighting proxy wars. Everywhere they go in a non-NATO nation, they're going to end up fighting a proxy war against uh, high-tech advanced weapons from China, Europe, USA, you name it, Turkey. And they're going to be bled dry. And what is their history with counterinsurgency, urban warfare? Crap. Right here. Right? And what's that going to do? That's going to create internal stability problems. It's going to kill them economically. It's going to cause the Emirates to break away. Right? It's going to be embarrassment with high rates of desertion. It's going to be another failure. Why? Because they failed every time. Except one time. Only one time they didn't fail. Militarily. I mean, try to integrate this. Right? Russia is weak all around. Much of Russia's aggressive expansionist actions are really defensive reactions to U.S. threats and attacks. All right? That's how it's painted in the West. That's how the U.S. media paints it. Russia's aggressive actions. For example, a Russian cyber hacking, was it dark something? Uh, dark. They hacked the colonial oil pipeline running from Texas to New England. Right? Shut it down. All right? Now, that's easily portrayed as Russian. All right? Any money it is. Why? Because we've been screwing with their pipelines. I wouldn't doubt that Russia's behind, the Russian government's behind this. Even though Biden said there's no connection, I wouldn't doubt it. Why? Because currently, right now, as we speak, we're attacking uh, since 2000. In 17, we've been attacking their Nord Stream 2 pipeline and Turk Stream 2 pipelines. Essentially killing them. I know the Nord Stream 2 is, is all but dead. Right? We're killing Russian pipelines. Going back to 1982 when we sanctioned and used diplomatic pressure against the Europeans to block Russia's uh, Orengord pipeline, gas pipeline. And then we blew it up. We blew that damn pipeline up with malware. Right? So, uh, you know, you're going to say, oh, Russia is aggressive. Well, it's aggressive, but it's also payback. And payback is also often deterrence. Don't screw with us again. Or you'll get it back the same. Right? I mean, that's the price you pay. We want to go aggressively attack Russia. We got to expect retaliation. Don't think we can get away with anything with no consequences. But but it's portrayed as an aggressive Russian threat. Now, honestly, that is the, the, the main threat Russia can have on us. 
cyber stuff. Why? It's sneaky, right? You know, it doesn't cost much, right? Right. Just get some smart geeks, right? But as far as military hardware, manpower, they don't have it. It's a joke. So U.S., after all, attacks Russia far more than Russia attacks the U.S. For example, Russia has attacked us recently. They hacked the U.S. government and a bunch of our companies, you know, and uh, they meddled with our elections, especially 2016. Uh, no doubt they meddled with 2020, but with less effect, right? Uh more safeguards in place this time against that. All right? But we do the exact same to them. We meddle in their politics. There are U.S. non government organizations right now in Russia interfering and meddling in Russian politics. And we, we hack Russia. All right? At least going as far back as 1982. When we blew up their Orin Gory pipeline by planting malware in the control systems that control the gas pressure and volume and all that stuff, overpressure blew the whole damn thing up. And here, here, here's a quote. This comes from former Air Force uh, uh, Secretary of the Air Force. He was also on the National Security Council, a guy named Tom and Reed, his book. Uh, he uh, at the abyss. He what did he say here? It was the most monumental non-nuclear explosion and fire ever seen from space. Now he he's an authority on this because he was the head, uh, uh, the director of national reconnaissance. You know, space reconnaissance, satellite imagery. He would know. Biggest explosion non-nuclear ever. The quarter from outer space. We blew up the damn pipeline. All right. So we we do the exact same to Russia. All right. Uh, and I've documented 17 far more serious attacks. Now, I've taught this list of 17 attacks three times now. I'm not going to teach it all again. All right. If you don't remember by now, well, I mean, what good is it going to do if I, I taught it again? What I will do is I'll I'll take a sample from this list and I'll, I'll review some of these. I won't go into the full details, all right, like I did before, but I'll just do a quick review to be a refresher, all right, to show you how we are attacking Russia, threatening Russia. We're jamming them. And when they react, we point at their reaction in total isolation of what we did to provoke it and say, look, Russia's being aggressive. Russia's being threatening. We totally eliminate from the picture the fact that we initiated it, that we jacked them up first, that we threatened them, that we attacked them. All right? That's a lie. To leave out information is a lie. But that's done all the time. It's called a classic get you, get you again game. You get them in a way that you know they're going to respond to. They have to respond to. They have to react to defensively. And then when they react, you point the finger and say, see, they're attacking us. All right, so that's the end of this introductory lecture. Again, I'm going to do the summary bit by bit, piece by piece.